Well, joining us now is Carl Weiderquist. He's an associate professor of political philosophy at Georgetown University here in Doha and also the author of the book Prehistoric Myths in Modern Political Philosophy. Thank you so much for being with us. You know, many people have described this election as the black swan election. The campaign was bitter. A lot of insults were traded. Um, just how difficult is it going to be for whoever wins the election to heal the divisions that have been exposed? Extremely. And uh, it should be remembered also that if Trump wins, he'll probably get a Republican Senate and a Republican House of Representatives, and he won't, and he'll be able to create a Republican majority in the Supreme Court, and he won't necessarily need to heal those divisions. He can rule from one side of it. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, it's more important with her. She's, she's got to try to find a way to work with Republicans. And Republicans have been increasingly unwilling to work with Democrats, even when they're min in the minority. They, uh, they usually want to force the Democrat to have failure, hoping to win the next election. And it's made it really difficult for anyone to run the country. But what about the divisions within American society itself? Even, even more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, People have, people are in, in some ways more polarized than their leaders because their leaders actually, there are a lot of things that they agree on. Often those things are corporate interests, but they agree on them either, across the aisle. Whereas, whereas people are much more sharply divided than they were uh, a few decades ago. And it's gotten to the point where, I mean, there are people who believe that, that Hillary Clinton goes around murdering her friends mm. because they believe these crazy conspiracy websites. Um, and when you get people believing these, these really polar opposite things, it's hard to get them to work together on anything. Right. Now, everyone around the world is watching this election very closely, of course. Everyone has their candidate of choice, it seems. The Russians have a soft spot, it seems, for uh, Donald Trump. I wonder, how does the international perception of the candidates feed into voters' choice? Well, uh, I, I don't think very much at all in the U.S. A lot of, the smaller the country is, the more they think about how other countries perceive them. But the United States is so big and so powerful and so culturally dominant in all these different ways that Americans don't spend very much time thinking about the international perception of how they're seen. And I certainly don't think Trump would be very good for our international perception. Right, but what about Clinton? Not a lot of people uh, on the international stage are reassured about a, a Clinton presidency either. Uh, well, I... I I mean, um, under the Democrats, they've gone from two to seven wars, so not necessarily better news for, you know, the, the, on the global stage, at least. No, 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 it's not. And, uh, well, I don't know that we've gone from two to seven. We're at, uh, we're at seven, but uh, the Republicans were always do already doing this drone progr program, and that was already in Pakistan and several other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so clinton is known for being a little little hawkish for a democrat but i don't know that she's any more hawkish than a republican uh i don't think any democrat would have started the war in iraq in 2003 and that includes hillary clinton and i expect her to do uh, a lot less brinksmanship with other countries than a trump presidency now say what you will about donald trump but there's one thing that he's got going for him is that he's a good promoter Donald Trump has taken the Donald Trump brand way up here. Do you think he'll do the same thing for the America brand on the world stage if he's elected U.S. president? No, absolutely not. Not, not only because uh, most people around the world think he's a buffoon, but because Trump, when he gets on the international stage, will be promoting Trump, not the United States. Okay. Now, looking ahead to the voting, which begins in uh, 20 minutes or so on the East Coast, what do you think will be the key factors to look out for here? Voter turnout, of course, is very important. But who are we looking at precisely uh, as far as the demographics are concerned? Is it the women voters? Is it white voters for, for both candidates? Is it the Hispanic, the Latino vote? What are we going to be looking out for? Uh, anyone who... Anyone who is, is non-white, if, if non-white groups are turning out in large numbers, that's better from the Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, and really, any, any group that gets othered in America, uh, a lot of gays turn out, a lot of women turn out, that, that's good. The, and younger people 
turnout that's good for the Democrats. The uh, good turnout for Republicans is older people and, and white men. Hmm. Uh, one last question, Carl, before we let you go, and this is a very important one. It's the results. Donald Trump has indicated throughout the campaign that he thinks that the system is rigged. He has said that he might not accept the election results if they don't favor him. What happens if that's the case, if he says, no, I don't agree with the results of this election? Well, as I say, the way I look at that is there are, there are, three, there are three things that are uh, three different ways he could challenge it. One is, I think, completely appropriate. If you challenge it through the courts, the way Al did, Gore did in 2000, and ran it up to the top court, and when he lost, he conceded. If Trump does that, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Th then you, you can challenge it with nonviolent protests, right. unarmed nonviolent protests. Right. And that can be appropriate in some circumstances. And then there's violent protest. And I'm afraid that some of what he said might already be enough to inspire that. I certainly hope not. I think it's a long shot. But uh, some violence could happen. And I've never, never expected that. I've never even thought that was a remote chance in previous elections. Well, let's hope it doesn't get to that. Thank you so much, Carl, for speaking to us. Carl Weinerquist of uh, Georgetown University here in Doha. Thanks for your time. And